Okay, so the next thing to talk about is the drums. Now, I actually did a bit of processing in Logic to go from the original Amen to the one I used in my track. Perfect, and I've sliced that up and uh, quantized it, and then I've done a whole bunch of processing here on this track. Okay, so to start with, I'm doing just a little bit of saturation here and just pulling a tiny bit of the, uh, filtering a little bit of the digital tops out of the sample and then lots of EQ here as well. Bringing a bit of clarity back to the sample. I think EQ is almost always the most important thing when you're processing breaks to really change the tone of the breaks. As always, a little bit of transient shaping, just adding a little bit more punch to the samples and doing nothing with the EQ here actually. So that's just sat in there. And then... A little bit of compression and a little bit of limiting. Two slightly more interesting things I'm actually doing with the processing on this Amen is firstly I'm sending it to a compressor in parallel. And I'm really smashing it, it's giving, just bringing out all of that, that vibe and room sound and so I'm mixing that in. So you can hear there, it really starts to bring up the energy of the break and it just makes the whole thing just sound bigger without actually increasing its level too much. So you're not increasing the peaks too much, but you can really fatten out a break and give it just a bigger sound. It's kind of adding a bit of reverb and grit and energy to the break. So the next thing I'm doing is actually adding a little bit more transient, even more transient back into the sound. So I've got a transient shaper on the plugin, but I feel when you push this transient shaper anymore, that's still quite a lot 25 for this. It starts to sound really weird. So another trick you can do is actually run a transient shape in parallel and just whack the attack on full and sustain on nothing. And then if I go to this channel, you can hear it's just doing the transient. And so you can add a little bit of transient, just transient in that way, which maybe is a little bit of a cleaner way to do it. Finally, one other thing I've done, and this is very much in Paradox's style, is to layer. And I've got a big fat kick here. I've got, done lots of processing on this again to get it to fit. I've tuned it down loads, so... Um, I really wanted a low, boomy kick here. Uh, I've made it, have I made it more punchy? And I've made it more punchy, so I'm just really kind of smashing it all together. <laughs> But if you listen to Paradox's tracks, he's often using a, a low subby kick like this. Sometimes the kick's actually mixed a lot louder than the break as well, but he loves to layer big fat kick drums over a drum break. Okay, wicked, so now let's get into some of the juicy stuff. And I wanna talk a little bit about how I've programmed this Amen in Renoise. So just to quickly look at the way I've sliced it, I've actually kind of left a lot of these notes in different groups. So you see both all these little shuffles are in a group. This is a kick and a hat. This is a double kick here. Like a, like a crash in a hat. So I've left all of those double um, layers together and I actually really like this way of programming the Amen. It just makes it a little bit easier not having to have all those micro elements. So I'm going kind of in between the method Fotec uses with the longer slices again and then Paradox's way of programming with all the little individual hits. I'm trying to merge like the perfect route in between both those techniques. Anyway, what I'm really focusing on with these breaks is kicks and the snares and building a rhythm with the kicks and the snares and then I'm filling in all the gaps with the shuffles. The 
way I really understand these breaks is by focusing on the kick and snare rhythms and I kind of say a whole bunch of stuff in a four bar passage and then I either have to get it to roll to the next passage or I want to accent the end of it a little bit more to say that's the end of this section and we're going to move to the next section in a second and you're just telling the ear a little bit what's going to happen before it does. And that's basically what drummers do when they're doing drum fills. But sometimes when you're working with breaks, you don't have access to all these other drum elements like crashes and toms and whatever. And so you can do a few little tricks to, to do very similar things to what drum fills do. Anyway, so the first thing I do is these little roll kicks at the end. And so I've done a little bit less velocity with this kick and that helps roll into the next one. And for me, that acts a little bit like a comma. So you can hear the, the little roll kick helps everything groove around a little more and kind of skips you into the next bar. So it's a little bit like a comma. And then the snare, the reverb snare hit, this one, is a lot more of like an accented hit. So that stops the beat a little bit more and it's more like a full stop. And so I use things a little bit like that to kind of work your ear. You just give your ear a little bit of preparation of what's coming next. So that's another effect here, rather than just leaving this snare open like this, what I've done is actually done snare and then a little reverse effect and that helps it roll around in the same way as the kick does. So I've done an, another snare hit and th that's the way I'm kind of getting from one part to the next and you can get more and more complicated in the way you do this but those are the basic elements I think is that at, at the end of every eight bar you need a little something that says we're at the end of the end of the passage and then at the end of the 16 bar you need another little thing that's saying we're at the end of the passage and then at the four bar intervals you need little things to, to just keep it rolling around and that's sort of the building blocks of how you do these little fills in drum and bass. Cool, so let's get into some of the other things that Paradox does and I talked a lot about in the last two tours about this air and he, he's always banging on about using the air in the samples and one way to do this in Renoise is actually, I think what I did here is I went to my original break and I just went and found these like little tails of the samples and so what I did is actually copy that to a new track and then what I did is put some modulation on it with a slow attack and a bit of decay and basically uh, just looped up the sample and it's quite low but it just gives you this sound that's the sound of the air in the break and it's very subtle but to me it's acting like parallel compression and reverb and this air are all doing some of the similar things in different ways where they're bringing up some of the noise in a break and filling in some of the space around the hits. And I'm just using it like a bit of camouflage to camouflage some of the edit points and the things that are happening. There's always a bit of the room sound behind the break that's happening. So I'm not sure if this is the way that Paradox does it, but I thought it was an interesting technique and it seems to be working in the context of this track. So I've talked about this stuff a lot on my channel before as well, but I love to use all of these snare variations and I'll go and create loads of different reverb snails, snails, different reverb snares with different tails. to give me lots of tone, like variations in the tone. And I use these all the time and you can create new rhythms by varying the different snares in your track. So just playing with the different snare tones there gives you much more interest or the ability to, to do much more interesting things with your drums.
Another thing I do, which I've talked a lot about as well, is create the uh, longer versions of the hits. And I showed, I've showed you multiple times how to create these reverb tails from the original tracks. And so I'll take that one and then I can pitch this one up and down. And that just gives me more things I can do with my drums there. And another thing I'm also doing is some break swapping where I'm interchanging between different breaks to give me even more variety in the hits. And here I'm jumping between a few different breaks um, just in these fill sections to just make them sound cool and interesting. And I've actually was listening to a Paradox track called Frost, I think it's called, and he does this really well there. And I took a lot of inspiration from that track when I was using this technique. Finally, I actually want to go into a little bit of detail of just how useful these reverb snares are and especially actually taking the time to print out a load of reverbs on the original Amen snare and bring them into your project. Uh, I've just dropped them all into one sample instrument here. But let me just show you a few, a few of the cool things you can do. So first, if I play you this little section here. Okay, so there's lots of stuff happening in this thing. Firstly, because we're just dragging these snares in as samples and we're programming them on this one track, whenever a new sample hits, it's gonna chop off the tail of that snare and you get this really cool gated <laughs> snare sound where it's going and so you're getting the gated snare and then the normal snare and it sounds really cool. And then I'm also taking another one of those reverb snares and doing a cool little forwards backwards trick with the um, backwards command here. So I'm getting such a variety of tone and you can actually hear at the end there, I let that snare ring out. So this one is I've taken a one of these snare samples, I've just copied this snare to a new track, but then I've actually put it on its own effects channel and I've sent it to a reverb and the reason I've done that is because I want this snare to always ring out these other snares are going to get gated whenever I trigger a new note but if I have a snare with the effect on it I can use that as like a more of an effect so I can have it ring out into the next section <laughs> And then one other thing you can do with these reverbs is to use them as risers. And if you just put them in reverse here, I've got this. So the snare reverbs are also really handy for creating risers. And then one final thing I want to show you is a little bit more of an advanced trick. What I've done here is I've got a, if I just solo this channel, I have a snare. But then I actually wanted to use the reverb from another snare on the tone of that one. And so what I've done is use a little bit of volume automation. So on this snare, which has the big reverb, I've taken the volume off the transient and then I'm just pulling the volume on like an eighth note later. Anyway, so I'm basically nicking this, the reverb from one snare and in putting it on another snare, which didn't have quite a good, good enough tail. And then I'm also doing a little bit of reversing there uh, as well. Another thing I'm doing with effects in the channel is using delays and I'm not doing too much of this, but I just did it at this one particular point to really accentuate something that's happening in the bass. I wanted the drums to strip away, but not just to stop. And so you can do like a reverb throw 
And what I'm actually doing here is I've got the, I'll create the do for, for, for a delay again. And then I'm sending the mix from naught all the way up, just on a 16th note. And just catching a snare hit the, in the delay. And then I've done a, a reverse hit to finish that one off. And so that sounds kind of cool if I show you this little bit. Another effect Paradox likes to use a lot and is very true to style is filtering. And I'm using filtering in two different ways here. Firstly, I'm filtering to lead myself into a breakdown section as to tail off the drums, preparing your ear for something to change in the track. And the trick I'm actually doing here is to not only to filter down the sound, but also to turn up the input as well. And I'm doing this on Filter Freak, which is an amazing plugin by Sound Toys. I do love the native filter in Renoise, but I like having this input output in Filter Freak and it has these cool analog algorithms that you can saturate the sound with. So what I'm doing here is driving the input, because if you think about it, you're pulling away frequencies with the filter and so you're make, almost always making the sound quieter that way. And so to balance the sound back up, you can turn up the input and I think that just helps to make the effect sound a little bit smoother and not just sound like everything's like withdrawing away. It's like the filtering's happening but the sound's still staying nice and up front. Anyway, so that's a cool thing I'm doing there. And then the other one I'm doing actually in this break swapping track is I'm doing all kinds of different filter effects, very similar, playing with the, the cutoff and the input to balance different hits and accentuate different hits in different ways. <laughs> One other thing that's quickly worth mentioning is that I do play with velocities quite a lot and not on every hit, but especially when I have three consecutive hits of the same drum type, I think it really helps to just change the velocities of the middle ones so that they're, they're not three of the same hits in a row. And it just, for whatever reason, it really helps to make it sound a lot less robotic when, you, when you're doing those little drum rolls or drum flares. <laughs> Okay, so you've probably noticed by now that I'm using all of these different commands in the effects columns. So let's just start breaking these down a little bit. Firstly, I love the backwards command. I do this all of the time, especially on snares. It gives you a really nice whipping, like a metallic whip back. And it's a very cool effect to use on your snare sound. Another way I like to use the backwards command is actually to combine it with the SSX command or the sample offset command. And what's gonna happen here is that by combining it with the sample command, you can really choose where you want the reverse to happen. Yeah, so the idea here is if you just have the standard backwards command, it's always gonna reverse right from the reverse of the sample. But by putting in the uh, SSX command, I can choose somewhere other than the endpoint to start the reverse from. So I can start it from a much better point to, to give more interesting sounds. So what you might also have noticed is that I'm using the C0B command everywhere. And this is the cut command. And all I'm really doing here is cutting the very tail end of the, the, the note off. 
So it's going to cut to the tick and I'm cutting really late. So rather than cutting at this line, I'm cutting like just before it. And the reason I'm doing this is if I take this command away, you can hear some of my hits, I would have them snagging and you can hear like the transients just getting caught of the next hit just a little bit. It's going, you can hear it's just a little bit weird and it's not clean. So there's some, there was just some weird things going on where the transients getting caught and actually putting this cut command at the end of certain hits just helps to clean that all away and you're not really hearing anything happening, it's just doing a lot of cleaning work. But I've used that all over my track everywhere and I vote this is the first track I've actually done it in but it was such a useful thing to find out. Another way you can use this command is similar to a no off message, you can use it to cut the sound but you can choose a little bit more precisely where you want to cut it. And so I'm cutting this snare hit here, or this kick even, just to use a little bit of silence there. And Paradox actually, he talked about this in one of his articles, I might be able to find it for you here, but he said he likes to use these cut commands just to give the sounds, the hits, a little bit of bite. And finally, one last command I'm doing, and I only do this once, but it could be very useful for you, is the fade command. And what I'm doing here is I didn't want this hit to have such a high whipping sound. So I've gone for the backwards command where I'm reversing the hit, but I wanted to just taper that off a little bit. And so I'm using the OXX, which is the fade out command, just to taper down that harsh backwards sound a little bit. Okay, so that's really it for me here. I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown. I've got a few more parts to actually get out in the next week or so. I've got one on uh, instruments and bass coming next. And then one last one I'm going to do on the mix down. So there's a few more bits to kind of finish off this whole series. But I hope this has been useful for you anyway. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you very soon. Peace.